Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. So Europe is banning Bitcoin mining tomorrow. Well, is the verdict out yet? Depends, I guess, on uh, what time you're watching this video. I'm releasing this on March the 14th, Monday, March 14th. So this tweet from Crypto Whale, he says, Europe is banning Bitcoin mining tomorrow, which will completely destabilize the Bitcoin network. Whales are rushing to dump. I expect lots of blood and volatility in the coming days. So this is a pretty loaded tweet. And I mean, this uh, situation here is going to be, uh, I think it's going to have an impact on the crypto market if it does go as uh, Crypto Whale says it'll go. Now, I mean, it is Monday and in Europe, there are several hours ahead. I'm recording this in the morning, Eastern Standard Time. And so here's the Bitcoin price right now, $39,100 per coin. We're trading on low volume down here. We haven't really seen uh, too much in terms of Bitcoin movement. So this is Bitcoin on the weekly. This is the reaccumulation phase. We're taking a look at uh, something that hasn't really changed over the last uh, several weeks now. But is this mining situation um, in Europe really going to affect the market? I guess, guys, more importantly, is it going to affect the entire market? Because quite frankly, if Bitcoin dumps, what we've seen in the past is the rest of the market tends to dump as well. So let's pay attention to this. I know uh, a lot of XRP community members are uh, quite excited about this because this means, I mean, ultimately, if proof of work gets demolished and becomes um, obsolete, that leaves room for coins like XRP to thrive. So a lot of different angles on this. Uh, I wanted to bring up this article here from Michael at Val 5 Links. The European Union will vote on Monday on a cryptocurrency framework proposal that could result in the banning of proof of work consensus assets. So here's the whole story. Uh, just going down here, the cryptocurrency market could face a drop in price as European Union is reportedly considering banning digital assets that use proof of work. Members of the EU will vote on markets and crypto assets, the MICA framework today, March 14th. The consensus among experts is that the outcome of the vote is too close to call. Should the proposal succeed, it could lead to a phasing out of Bitcoin, Ethereum, and other crypto assets into non-proof-of-work consensus mechanisms. The proposal would have an effect on all countries that are members of the EU. The particular statement in the proposal that calls for the phasing out of current assets was added at the last minute. The major motivating factors behind the new addition are the circumvention of economic sanctions and environmental concerns. Lawmakers are expressing some worry about Russia avoiding the full impact of economic sanctions for its attacks on Ukraine through cryptocurrencies, but it appears that the environmental impact of cryptocurrency mining is the biggest concern, and the EU did specifically say so. Uh, the last minute change was made because there is some belief that Bitcoin's carbon footprint breaks the EU's environmental standards. And so uh, here's just a quote down here with regards to the environmental sustainability. Minimum environmental sustainability standards with respect to their consensus mechanism used for validating transactions before being issued, offered, or admitted to trading in the union. So the crypto world has obviously criticized this proposal. Uh, there are several tweets down here. You know, many Bitcoin maximalists. Hey, here's the thing. You know, I was on Twitter this morning. Many Bitcoin maximalists were chiming in on this. Of course, I'm staying very, very optimistic, saying, you know, this isn't even that bad because they're talking about Bitcoin hash rate. And even if Europe, yes, the entire continent of Europe bans Bitcoin mining, well, you know, that mining will go elsewhere. So there are two questions here. You know, if um, I guess first, if this does collapse the price of Bitcoin, are other cryptocurrencies going to collapse with it? Other proof of work coins, first of all, and then think about the rest of the crypto market. Think about all the other uh, proof of stake coins that exist. Well, will those also go down? We know since Bitcoin is the leader of the pack, it does have a lot of influence. So um, let's talk a little bit more about this. Jake Travinsky uh, also weighing in on this. The MICA situation is worse for crypto than anything in the USA. This is what he's stating. Tomorrow, the European Parliament votes on environmental sustainability standards that look like a pretext for a Bitcoin ban. If it passes, it can be undone in the next phase of the EU process, but it's very bad. He retweeted out his tweet, I fear we've been underestimating the potential impact of MICA on the crypto industry globally. Uh, in the US, it feels like we've buried our heads in the sand, thinking it isn't our problem and hoping it doesn't affect us. If the GDPR is of any example, that may be a big miscalculation. He tweeted that back in November, uh, and now he is stating this you know, ticket to the moon saying good riddance than anything in the USA, quoting his tweet, you still can't even talk about the case against XRP and Ripple by name or that it's currently the worst thing for crypto. Okay, goodbye. 
Real Deal XRP down here saying, oh, muffin, banning POW is needed, wastes too much energy, and there are other consensus mechanisms better, faster, and more secure. Suck it up and face the facts. Chris Larson was right that wasteful POW protocols were going to be subject to harsher regulation, but no one listens. So Jake Travinsky uh, getting some flack here from the XRP community. He uh, also uh, made a tweet, another tweet yesterday, posted this. Make no mistake, if they manage to ban proof of work, they'll come for proof of stake next and every other civil resistance mechanism after that. This isn't just about environmental impact, he states here. It's about the right of non-state money to exist. Their strategy is to divide and conquer. Let's not fall for it. So, um, you know, to this statement here, he does have a point, although I do think it is a uh, double whammy for them. It is about the environmental impact, but uh, it is about sovereign currency as well. They do not like that the El Salvadors of the world are doing what they are doing, even though uh, we know El Salvador is coming up with solutions in order to mine sustainably, like for example, their uh, volcano initiative, mining Bitcoin using the energy from the volcano to mine Bitcoin specifically. Uh, Anders L down here saying that's not true. This is about environmental impact. Read Micah and you'll realize it's about the EU embracing the digital revolution. Uh, the crypto market has made a good job of dividing itself. No outside source needed. Just look at how XRP has been treated and you cheered on the lawsuit. <laughs> so back when that was announced, Jake Travinsky uh, said, good, good that Ripple's in court for the reasons he had. Uh, Bubba Cugs here uh, posting this. We warned you for years. Uh, you know, and this is a great um, visual representation of how many terawatt hours Bitcoin takes up versus uh, other cryptocurrencies like Ethereum. XRP here. XRP consumes less energy than ETH and BTC. You can see uh, XRP 0.01 terawatt hours compared to uh, Ethereum 19.62. Uh, and then you compare that to Bitcoin 68.81. It also just gives you down here the equivalent of what that is. I mean, I don't have to get into the details of that, uh, but I think you guys get it. Bitcoin has been an energy guzzler. And so, you know, they needed to create a better solution. XRP was created out of uh, some of the issues they saw from Bitcoin. So it's almost like a Bitcoin 2.0, faster, cheaper, more environmentally friendly, uh, overall just more efficient. And so, um, I mean, you know, I talk a lot on this channel about that, have been for years now. Um, so here's the argument, right? To his point though, uh, they do not want to allow independent currencies to become currencies for nation states. And so, you know, maybe it's just another convenient excuse for them to ban Bitcoin mining. Now, is it really going to have an effect? Because I mean, you know, first of all, let's take a let's go back to the chart, right? This is happening today and uh, in Europe, they're several hours ahead and we haven't still seen any move for Bitcoin up or down or anything. I mean, it doesn't even look like this announcement is affecting anything Bitcoin related. We're still trading on low volume, still trading at about $39,000. The rest of the crypto market has not been affected either. If I bring up XRP real quick here, 77 cents for XRP. Crypto market still hanging out at about $1.7 trillion. We've seen Bitcoin dominance, uh, you know, hovering around this amount for several months now, 42.6%. So is this affecting the market? I mean, it doesn't really look like the market has uh, flinched at what is going on here. Um, we're, we also have to note this. Okay, Michael uh, mentioning this, according to the latest report from Into the Block, over 99% of Bitcoin volume comes from cryptocurrency transactions over $100,000. And guys, guess where they're fueled from? They're fueled from institutional transactions. So institutional demand for Bitcoin continues to grow, even if there is not much reflected in the prices. According to the latest report from Into the Block, over 99% of Bitcoin volume comes from cryptocurrency transactions over $100,000 fueled by institutional traders. And this report out just uh, just today. So this is the most recent news here. This tweet here from Into the Block uh, just came out yesterday. 99% currently, over 99% of all Bitcoin volume comes from the transactions of over 100,000. The dominance of institutions, that change in market structure accelerated in quarter three of 2020. So uh, fairly recently, Into the Block's report reveals that institutional interest in cryptocurrency picked up the pace since the third quarter of 2020, after which the share of institutional transaction volume never went below 90%. So I think that also tells us something. In fact, since 2020 quarter three, companies like PayPal, Tesla, MicroStrategy heavily added the flagship cryptocurrency into their balance sheet, resulting in highs throughout 2021 with the former buying Bitcoin as a strategic primary reserve asset. So think about this for a second. Uh, institutional uh, transactions over $100,000, that accounts for 99% of Bitcoin volume. 
Which begs the question, is Bitcoin going anywhere anytime soon? I mean, to me, it doesn't sound like it. Uh, also, uh, you know, I mentioned El Salvador earlier in this video, but uh, the other week, uh, this is about three weeks ago, Mexican Senator plans to introduce Bill to make Bitcoin legal tender as well. Uh, Indira Kempis recently featured in an interview with Diario El Salvador discussing her intention to propose a bill that would make Bitcoin legal tender in Mexico. Kempis discussed the inspiration she received in visiting El Salvador and seeing the rising financial inclusion. Kempis discussed the price of inaction and the need for Mexico to take action as a basic right for its citizens. So in Mexico, they're also looking like they are making Bitcoin legal tender. At least she is introducing a, uh, a bill to do this. And again, this uh, just from three weeks ago, February 23rd, 2022. The IMF World Bank powers that be do not like this one bit. If they are going to have their way, if they are going to, you know, introduce central bank digital currency, um, their ultimate goal to be able to have control over the people and Bitcoin does the exact opposite. Bitcoin allows financial freedom. It allows citizens to have control over their own wealth. And so, you know, as we're seeing more countries jump onto Bitcoin, this goes against their entire uh, ideology and the entire Great Reset narrative. So you can see how there's going to be tension here. You can see why in Europe they're making excuses, why they want to ban Bitcoin. Um, but then I saw this, guys. Bitcoin banning measures seem too close to call in Monday's EU Parliament vote, so this uh, just coming out, still, people familiar with the matter said a slim majority of parliamentarians could defeat a controversial new MICA provision that seeks to force proof-of-work cryptocurrencies to shift to more energy-friendly consensus mechanisms. So updated just today, um, a proposed rule that could effectively, okay, so then it just goes into the story here. They're stating here the outcome's still very much undecided. Uh, the Parliament's uh, Economic and Monetary Affairs Committee is set to vote on the draft. Uh, today, the draft contains a late addition that looks to limit the use of cryptocurrencies powered by energy-intensive proof-of-work. Uh, Coindesk reported yesterday uh, that the provision in question requires all crypto assets to be subject to the EU's minimum environmental sustainability standards. Uh, we know that. But down here, the provision was met with swift backlash from the crypto community worldwide. Extremely high stakes vote in the EU that such a proposal made it this far is extraordinarily concerning and unlikely to stand up to practical reality. This coming from Jeremy Allaire, founder of CirclePay on Twitter. A number of EU parliamentarians have been pushing the ban for proof of work cryptocurrency over energy concerns, even if uh, the energy in question were to be renewable. They fear that renewable energy could be channeled into proof of work computing rather than the national grid destined for public use. So this is not a done deal yet, guys. I will link the uh, the article in the description if you want to read the full thing. But um, I think just by going through this, you can see there are still people against this provision, uh, although they are saying it is a close call. But really, I mean, we got to think about it. Is this, can this really affect Bitcoin price? I mean, you know, we've been hearing a lot about this. The vote is today, and yet... We are not really even seeing the market flinch. We have seen uh, Bitcoin consolidating now for several months, still trading $39,100 on low volume. It's, it's looking as though it's a slow news day. It doesn't even look as though anything in the news could affect Bitcoin. So as per Crypto Whale's point here, are we going to see this destabilize the Bitcoin network? Are we going to see whales dump considering 99% uh, of the hash rate, for example, is used for transactions over $100,000 from institutions? Considering countries like Mexico are now looking to add Bitcoin uh, as legal tender in their country. Let's also put it into perspective, guys. I also just took a look at Bitcoin mining hash by country. And you can see the top eight Bitcoin mining countries by hash rate are the United States in number one with 35.4%, then Kazakhstan, Russia, Canada, Ireland, okay, technically in Europe, but with only 4.68%, then Malaysia, then Germany with 4.48%, so two European countries here, and then Iran. So for all intents and purposes, it doesn't even look like Europe participates in Bitcoin mining at the rates that other countries participate in Bitcoin mining, namely the United States, Kazakhstan, Russia, and Canada in the top four. So even if it were to be banned, is it really going to have an effect 
on Bitcoin price? Will those miners um, just perhaps relocate to other countries to set up shop, perhaps in another country where energy costs are even more affordable? Somebody was actually saying on Twitter, I forget who it was now, that this could be good for Bitcoin in the United States. You know, if miners decide to come to the United States, there could be more development on the Bitcoin network, allowing the US to kind of take that lead again over Bitcoin mining and Bitcoin development. Um, so that's another angle. Again, though, my biggest thing is if we do see Bitcoin price plummet for this reason, we could see altcoins follow along with it just because we are still in a very immature market, guys. So uh, that would mean XRP, you know, all the other cryptocurrencies that you would hold would likely fall if we did see this happen to Bitcoin. That's one theory. Another theory, though, is that maybe that could trigger an alt season. If this does come down and proof of work coins are being scrutinized heavily, maybe the money will flow into other cryptocurrencies, other alternative currencies. So it'd be kind of like uh, an alt rally, but uh, for proof of work coins, I guess. Money coming out of Bitcoin, Ethereum, all those other cryptocurrencies and moving into cryptocurrencies like XRP, XLM, and a multitude of others. The good news is, is that XRP hodlers were very well diversified, even if we do only hold XRP, which, um, you know, full disclosure, I hold a handful of cryptocurrencies, uh, all cryptocurrencies that solve problems. But even if you do hold just XRP, there are many possibilities, many different reasons why and how XRP can moon. The spec market is definitely one of them. Um, you know, real world utility, once we see that, we are going to see uh, real value being derived from the XRPL. So that is definitely going to have an effect on XRP price. Also this lawsuit, we will likely see a pump once we get XRP clarity. So there's just three ways where we could see XRP price move. Let's not forget, guys, this uh, tweeted out by Digital Asset by retweeting out Bull Dieppe's tweet here on Twitter. This tweet from back in January 2019. The only problem that holds XRP back is regulatory clarity. This is Ryan Zagone at a November 2018 IMF event. And listen to what he had to say. Right. You might still use proof of work. Great. But I invite to Ryan and yeah. Desiree, I don't know if you would like to comment on this as well. But Ryan, go ahead. Proof of work doesn't work. Uh, proof of work doesn't work. Oh, it's Ryan, been widely Ryan, proof of work. Oh, let, let me finish. Let proof finish. of work doesn't let work. Let finish, please. And in the early days of Bitcoin, there was a whole group of developers that broke off to create other assets, XRP being one of them, that doesn't use mining, that's cheaper from an energy perspective than Visa, and already scales to 1,500 transactions a second. A lot of these problems have already been solved. The challenge for adoption comes back to policy. The, the policy uncertainty around some of the assets has limited adoption, particularly here in the US. And I'm speaking from Ripple and XRP because we use that, that asset because it's a half a cent per payment. It's basically free. It's, uh, it scales and it's efficient to 1,500 transactions a second at, no inter at nearly no energy burn. So we're at a point today where there are real solutions to all of these challenges that already exist. Policy has become the challenge. And we heard on the first panel that around uh, centralization on China, and this is going to be a hard pill for Peter to swallow. But 80% of the mining power for Bitcoin is controlled by six mining pools, five of which are in China. Today, the policy certainty in the U.S. exists for Bitcoin and Ethereum, despite the fact those are China-controlled platforms. So activity goes to those platforms. What we need to do from a, from a policy perspective in the U.S. is look at the places where there are uncertainty. And when we, one place I'm speaking directly for me here is XRP, where it looks like Bitcoin. It's decentralized. It's open source. We have a small, we have 7% of the validation power on that, rather small in there. Grouping or, or giving clarity to those ones that are, are very similar to Bitcoin and Ethereum that have the same characteristics and should be classified the same way. And then we're creating a level playing field across all the cryptos. I'm not anti-Bitcoin or anti-Ethereum by any means. I think there's a lot of great potential and breakthrough there. But we need to have a level playing field so the market can pick which ones they want to use and not be, to, as today they are, hindered by regulatory uncertainty. And so here's where we are today. The market can choose, once we get that regulatory clarity for XRP, ultimately XRP, going to decouple from Bitcoin. But in the meantime, we're either still coupled if we do see a Bitcoin collapse or perhaps money will flow out of proof of work and into cryptocurrencies like XRP. That's just my opinion, but I wanna hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.